today, one year ago, I set myself the goal to become a remote freelance web developer. The only thing was I didn't know how to code. I had never been a freelancer before and I had no idea where to start. If you want to see how I learned everything to achieve this goal, which I can say proudly I've finally achieved, then stick around for this video and I'll help you do the same. Step one, what is the very first thing you need to do before you set out on this big adventure? Because it's going to be a big adventure and it isn't easy. This is something that you need to really want. If you don't really want it, chances are you're gonna find it a little bit too hard. Learning to code is great and it is achievable to everybody. And I firmly believe that I'm not somebody special with some special tricks or skills that made it possible for me. No, I'm exactly like you are, probably watching this video considering different options. But the very first thing you need to write out is your why. There is a book by Simon Sinek that talks about starting with why. And although I see this everywhere and it's kind of contrived at this stage because everybody talks about starting with why, it is really important. I understood the reason why I wanted to become a freelance web developer. I needed to be able to live wherever I wanted to live, move away from a cold country in the summer and really enjoy good weather and beach lifestyle. And I also wanted to have the flexibility of working when it suited me. Sometimes I like to work really hard for short periods of time and other times I want to work a little bit more relaxed, let's say. So really write down three strong reasons why you want to do this because that's going to help you later on in the future steps when you're learning to code. When you've decided that this is what you want to do and you've written out your why, it's time to make a plan. Uh, I come from a sports science background and what we do in sports science is we set goals and this can be applied to any industry that you're in. Setting a goal is pretty easy if you follow the smarter principles. I'm not going to outline that here but I will in a future video. You could just do a quick Google for smart goal setting. But what you want to do most importantly is to set three distinctive goals. And what I mean by that is short-term goal, a medium-term goal, and a long-term goal. So your long-term goal is the absolute outcome that you want. So for me, that was to be a completely remote freelance web developer. Along that way, you need to have some small wins planned out for yourself. So the goals for this week would be your micro cycle. Okay, this week I wanna achieve an understanding on HTML. That's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna understand what is HTML. I'm gonna download an IDE. If this doesn't make sense to you, don't worry, it will. I'm gonna download an IDE. I'm gonna learn what HTML is. And by the end of the week, I'm gonna know a little bit more about development than I did last week and that's the most important thing you need a medium goal which is a meso cycle a meso cycle is somewhere along the line okay well i want to learn html and css and i want to build a interactive web page or a static site by the end of three months so that's an achievable goal that you could set out for yourself as a mid-term mid -term goal long term it's the actual job so do write out this plan and give yourself every opportunity to succeed. So make these goals achievable. So once you've set the goals and you have determined what you want to achieve in the short term, the medium term, and the long term, it's time to get started. So when you've made your plan and you know how you're going to achieve these goals, you need to find some resources that are gonna help you. I have the resources that really helped me and I'm gonna share those with you in later videos. But right off the bat, I would say take a look at the Odin Project. It is a free bootcamp that you can follow to learn how to code. And that's the system that I used. It is a little bit daunting at the start, but it is definitely possible. Uh, it, it's quite challenging all the way, but if you follow it and you stay consistent, you can definitely achieve what I have achieved. It's really important that you document your progress because there's gonna be times where you want to quit. That's just the nature of the beast. What I did was I made short videos for myself. So I think if you go back in my channel, you can see some that I actually published. But when I first started out, 
I was just documenting what I learned and what I was struggling with. And it sounds so simple at the time, but when I was two weeks or three weeks later and I would go back and watch those videos, I was mind blown by how simple the things I was stuck on really were. They were easy now. And that sense of achievement, when you look back on what you originally struggled with, but is now easy for you, is really motivating and it's gonna keep you going as you progress. This leads me on to another point. We need to celebrate our mini wins. So when you achieve that short-term goal, when you achieve that mid-term goal, when you understand something that you didn't understand already, these are mini victories and we need to bottle up those moments and celebrate them. Take breaks and just look back on how far you've come, but you need to reward yourself in some way, whether that's, okay, when I achieve this goal, I'm gonna give myself a break, I'm gonna take a day off, I'm gonna go to the park, I'm gonna do something nice for myself, I'm gonna buy a new pair of jeans, whatever it is that's gonna make you celebrate what you've achieved, do it because you need those mini wins along the way. It's all about motivation and consistency. Step three on the progress of learning to code and achieving this goal is to actually apply for work. So you can learn to code in a short space of time. I learned the basics and kind of enough to get easy jobs after three months of non-stop effort. And I mean non-stop effort. If you do that, you need to start making a portfolio piece. So a simple website, you can probably learn how to set one up, you can follow a tutorial to set one up, but put it live on the internet. This is your address on the internet, so people know that you exist and that you do this stuff. Create a portfolio with simple projects and then try and attract some kind of clients and you're not looking for big contracts. I'm talking small, small contracts. $5 an hour doing simple CSS stuff, generating a web page using WordPress, whatever it is, try and get off the ground. Just get one gig done and then try and get another gig done. Then try and up that rate. It is really challenging at the start, but once the ball gets rolling, you'll feel great. I hit a client the very first job and I was just doing video editing just to get myself in the flow of how to do freelance work, how it works, how to interact with clients. There's a lot in it and there's a lot of areas to improve on. My first coding gig came after three months where I was doing back-end crazy stuff that I had no clue how to do but I just reached out to communities, got a little bit of help, pushed through the project and I got a good review. And that's what it's all about. So make sure that you make your profile, make sure you've got a portfolio, and make sure you get started as quickly as possible because nothing can replace that experience of freelancing. If you're able to follow these three stages and these three steps, that means you've achieved your goal. And that's exactly what I want for you because it's what I wanted for myself more than anything. And I know that I spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos, trying to learn from other people. And now I wanna be that resource for some other people who also want to learn. So what I've done is I've started a email newsletter that I'm gonna release probably bi-weekly. And the plan here is to try and deliver you resources that helped me a lot. Everything that I'm gonna share with you is gonna be a free resource. I did not spend one cent learning to code. So it is 100% possible for you to achieve this without any financial investment. You just need to invest your time. But I wanna save you time by giving you the resources that helped me the most. So do subscribe to the channel for future videos on the topics that I've mentioned before. Of course, this is just an overview of what it takes. I'm gonna release some more interesting step-by-step -step process videos in the future, along with some discussion around what it takes to be a freelancer and if it's right for you. So do stick around, drop a like and comment if you've got any questions at all, I would be delighted to help. Have a great day and thanks for stopping by.